Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this video is intended to give some uh, basic uh, understanding of the different components of the overhead transmission lines. Uh, actually, I did a video a uh, few months ago, uh, and that video was very short and gives sort of an overview. But this video is intended to give you more details about the uh, components of overhead lines and why they are used and certain aspects of these uh, components. So you, if you look to this, for example, in front of us, this overhead line here, you can classify that the parts of the overhead lines as follows. First is the, the tower. This is the tower. And this is the main thing in the, in the overhead lines. And then we have the conductors, and you will see there are two different types of conductors. Uh, those conductors that carry the current, the three phase system and the, the conductors on top and these are for protection from lightning. Then we will have the insulators which connect the conductors to the tower. And finally, there are some accessories that we will talk about about them as we uh, progress. Now, to explain the different components, I will use the following style. So basically, I am using this uh, book, uh, the transmission line uh, reference book for 345 kV and above. Uh, this is this book is available online. One part of this book is talking about existing projects in North America, different uh, different overhead lines at different voltage levels, and it gives details about these overhead lines. So I will try to ta take some snapshots of those uh, projects uh, and try to explain what is the meaning of the most important terminologies used in, over in overhead lines. So, for example, it starts with the utility. Th these are the names of the utility companies. And here's some very general information. Uh, so this is th this information is, for example, for uh, towers or overhead lines working at 345 kV. And in the book, there is uh, details about 500 kV and 765 kV uh, as well. But uh, of course, uh, because of the time limit, I will just talk about examples, few examples from 345 kV. Uh, this is the line name. Now, the voltage is 345 kV, and it's an AC system. And here's some information about the length and about when this line was constructed. Now, let's talk about the first thing, which is the tower, the structure. And here it gives you some information. This is the material is S, which is means it's a steel. The type 3L11. Now, 3L11, it has certain structure, and this is the 3L11. Uh, average number per mile, this is how many towers you will have every, every mile, and this is something about the weight. And then here it says designed for two, and then you have C here V. So this is two is the number of circuits. And you see here, there is one circuit here, and there is another circuit there. And as I said, this is a lattice type of uh, towers. There is another lattice type of a tower, okay, made from steel, 3L3, this is the, the design, 3L3, and again, the same thing, but this is for single circuit, okay? And it's an H type. H type means it looks like the letter H. Another structure as well, but here the difference, the material is wood. Okay, and again, it's also a, set, a single circuit and each type. And there are many, many different types of designs, but this is uh, a few uh, points that when you look to the structure, is it lattice, is it wood? And there are some other structures as well. For example, this is a pool structure. And usually this is used uh, whenever uh, there is uh, not enough space for the right of way. When you want to have a compact design, we use this design, okay? Uh, as uh, compared to the cross arm lattice structure where you will have access to more right of way. And I have a video about uh, the selection of the tower based on the right of way. I will put it in the description as well. So this is about the structure. Let's talk about now the conductors. 
So here we'll start with the ACSR, alumina conductor steel force. So that is the most common type of conductors, and we call them the conventional conductor. There are now an, another cat, uh, category of conductors. We call them the uh, high uh, temperature, low sag uh, conductors. Again, I have another video that this uh, compares the ACSR with the HTLS uh, conductors. So what is this ACSR? So basically, it's a, a conductor that's composed of two different types of metals. There is the steel, okay, and this steel here says seven conductors, and that steel is for reinforcement. And then here we have the alumina outer uh, strands. We have two layers and 30 conductors so basically how we describe this we describe it as 30 slash 7. now here in that specific example it says the stranding 48 slash 7. so 48 is basically the number of aluminum conductors seven is the number of conductors of the of the steel and then here again uh, some information about uh, uh, mechanical information about the weight here it is number of phase number of conductor bare phase it says here it's two okay and this is something very very important it means that this is a bundle of two so if you look here for example to this tower we have here you can see that bare phase there is two conductors so this we call it bundle of two so here each phase will have two conductors spacing in inches 18 this is the distance between these two conductors between this conductor and this conductor basically it is the 18 18 inches and this distance is very very important in calculating the inductance and the capacitance of the of the line uh, i might cover that in uh, in the future now here uh, another important thing for us as electrical engineer this is designed for how many amps per phase it's 200 2150 amps at the summer so it, like at the peak value so it can carry up to this up to this current so this is the conductor, the second components. Then we have the insulators, which isolate these high voltage conductors from the uh, from the tower. And we see here the configuration, it says V and I. When you look to this specific example, it has the two configurations in one tower. The I, when you have, this is the I and this is the I. So when you have the string of the insulators are perpendicular, like in uh, as an I letter, and the second one is the V, the V type, okay, where the, the insulators are connected as a V shape. And here, this is the I, and this is the V shape, how they look like. Now, the V, we usually use them whenever there is some wind. So, you want, if you want to limit the vibration of the conductors, uh, we use the, the V shape. Here is the, this is the 5 by 34 uh, inch. This is the standard size for the cab and bin this you can see here the insulators are composed for a string of cab and and bins number of string bare phase two and one two if you have a v shape you will have two strings as you can see here if you have an i shape you have only one string of uh, insulators now here is the number of units bare string so every string in the v shape or in the i how many of those cab and bins. We can count you one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So this is something about the, the insulators that we use in overhead, in overhead lines. Then the lightning protection, and this is something very, very important uh, because as we know that those overhead lines expand in very long distances. Now, if a lightning hits, we don't want the lightning to go directly and hit the conductors. Otherwise that will cause uh, could cause a damage or a failure of the power system. So we have shield wires on top of the of the lattice diagram. And it's still here, or the tower, generally speaking. So here is the number of shield wires is two. So and that's information specifically for this tower. You can see here one and two. You look here, this is uh, another tower, one and two. So we have two shielding shield wires are on top. So whenever a lightning hits here, the lightning tend to hit the tallest point in a structure, so it will hit these one of those two conductors and protect the transmission line conductors from any flashover. 
and here are some other information uh, for example the uh, the protection angle okay and this is something very very important so for this specific tower if this is the conductor here is the the shield conductor and here is the actual conductor phase a so there is a shield angle here that protect basically that conductor so if the lightning hits within that shield angle this conductor is actually protected and here it gives you these uh, these angles and here is the tower footing resistance now the tower is connected to the ground and you want to have this foot resistance it's this than 5 ohm very 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 small so that whenever the high surge current go from the from the shield through the tower to the ground you will not have very high voltage build up because the resistance is extremely extremely small Finally, we talk about the accessories, which is the motion uh, suppression. Now, those conductors, because of the wind, they will be actually subjected to a lot of vibrations. Uh, let's see this short video that describe or shows you some of this movement. See here, this is a bundle of three conductors. So you see they are they are moving. There is no damping there. So you are not damping the movement and this is could be really dangerous to see how the conductors are actually moving here. It's even in extreme cases you can see how the conductors are vibrating. So you want to limit this basically uh, this uh, movement. So we use dampers. So here we have two different types of uh, ways to damp uh, or to suppress the movement. The first one is the damper. And these dampers basically are close to the insulators. So you see here two, and this these are two, a closer look to this. So this is basically like a, a small weight, and this will damp uh, some of the, uh, the vibrations. Another thing is the spacer. Now, whenever you have more than one conductor per phase, you have to connect these conductors together so that you will not have, uh, when, whenever there's a wind, you will not touching or you are not heating each other. So you keep the space uniform. And this is something important in calculating the inductance and the capacitance. So here, uh, this is a, a bundle of two, bundle of three, bundle of four. And you have here, you see here the spacer that is connecting uh, these conductors to maintain that uh, space uniform through all over the uh, the conductor. So that's uh, I, I would say this is just an ABCD about the overhead transmission lines.